Today, I'm breaking down every type of compression and how to use it in your mix. So starting with number one, the most basic and formal type of compression is known as downwards compression. A lot of people see this and just say compression, but because we're breaking down all the different separate nuanced types of compression, we're going to refer to this with its full scientific name, downwards compression. Now it's called downwards compression because it's focused on taking the peaks of the sound and reducing them downwards. And when I'm mixing songs, the first place that I like to use compression is on my vocals. So let's go down here to our lead vocals of the song titled Rising Up that I produced for Easy McCoy. And I'll put a link to the full album in the description below. And let's just take a listen to this from the beginning and we'll apply some compression to the lead vocal. We'll just drop CB101 here on the lead. Let's open the plug. I wake up daily on a mission. Yeah, I ride a Let's reduce the threshold. Get to the point, no contradiction. Get to the point. Yeah, going hard is my tradition. So what you see here is the attenuation meter pushing the loud peaks downwards. Hence the name downwards compression. And these are the basic controls that you see on every compressor. You have threshold, knee, ratio, and this is actually a special one, bite, which pertains to the transients that are allowed through. And then of course, attack and release, an output gain to make up for the level changing. And those are the things that you'll see on just about any compressor. The threshold is probably the first thing that you're gonna be dialing in. And I always like to have my threshold set at about 17 or so, depending on how loud the vocals tracked in. I wake up daily on a mission. Yeah, I ride and die in my position. Get to the point, no contradiction. Get to the point. Yeah, going hard is my tradition. For vocal compression, I always like to start with a two to one ratio. As you turn this up, it acts more and more like a limiter. It becomes more strict and has a harder ceiling. Knee is very similar to ratio, but in this plugin, it makes it respond like different famous compressors as you switch between low, medium, and high knee settings. I wake up daily on a mission. Yeah, I ride and die in my position. Let's slow down the attack to let more of the transient through. And let's speed up the release. Just bring the ends of the words up a little bit more in the mix. And just bring up 2 dB of output gain. We're only doing about 2 dB of reduction. It's a great indicator of what to do on your output. Let's copy the same compressor here onto these lead vocals. This is what I call leverage, pulling down the lever, calling on the shots, yeah, it's forever. And without it, this is what I call leverage, pulling down the lever, calling on the shots, yeah, it's forever, can't stop, can't stop, won't stop, won't stop. Now at a two to one ratio, or actually even less, we're doing a very subtle light reduction. If you want to dive deeper into downwards compression, another great way to explore the different flavors of downwards compression, like FET compressors, VCA, Opto, Compressor, these are all different downwards compressions and different characteristics that get applied along the way. A great way to really hear the difference between all of those is the MIC DSP 6030 Ultimate Compressor. It's called the Ultimate Compressor because it gives you all of those different famous classic flavors of compression all in one for you to scroll through with the same exact settings. So we could do a very similar light squeeze with any of these plugins. Let's just pull our threshold down a little bit. I wake up daily on a mission. Yeah, I ride and push our makeup gain up a little bit. Get to the point, no contradiction. Get to the point. Yeah. Going hard it's just our attack and release time with time constant. And now let's just scroll through the different flavors. Get to the point, no contradiction. Get to the point. Yeah, going hard is my tradition. All I do is win. I can't stop for nothing here. Hunting, yeah, you gotta love it when you got it out of nothing. You can't stop the rise. Everything's right on time. If you don't seize the moment, you never press a wine. 
Now the difference between all these is very nuanced and very small, but these are all different flavors of downwards compression. And I love the 6030 Ultimate Compressor because it makes exploring all those different tones and flavors so much more instantaneous and easy. And we're gonna complement this with our next type of compression, number two parallel compression. Now this is another form of downwards compression, but the unique difference is you're blending the dry signal in with the compressed signal or do something really extreme to pull out the saturation characteristics of your compressor, but just blend it in at a low amount. So that's where parallel compression becomes a really great alternative or complementary counterpart to downwards compression. One of my favorite parallel compressors for MIC DSP is actually inside of the Ultimate 6030 compressor. And this final one makes a really great parallel compressor. We're just going to use this mix knob so that we have an even blend of both just to start with, and then we'll adjust it from there. All I do is win. I can't stop for nothing here. Hunting, yeah, you gotta love it when you got it out of nothing. Zero. You can't stop the rise. Everything's right. 100. If you don't seize the moment, let's try to gain up a little bit. No. When you give up, floating under pressure, do the most, not the lesser. Can't nobody do it better. And you can see that's really compressed. But when we blend it in for parallel, get to the point, no contradiction. Yeah, going hard is my tradition. All I do is win. I can't stop for nothing here, hunting. Yeah, you gotta love it when you got it out of nothing. You can't stop the rise, everything's right on time. If you don't seize the moment, you never press a wine. Ain't no race when you give up. Floating under pressure, do the most, not the lesser. Can't nobody do it better. A little bit more aggression to cut through the mix, but not much more actual volume. You could hear the vocal just way more clearly over all the synths and loud drums in this production. So parallel compression is what I call a must have vocal mixing compression. There's some vocals where I don't add much downwards compression to my recordings because I do a little bit on the analog side as I record, but I always, always make sure I do parallel compression, at least on the lead vocal. You can also do parallel compression on your whole mix. Let me copy this ultimate compressor down onto this lead vocal too, so they sound the same. And let's drag another compressor down here before our master limiter. Technically a limiter is a type of compression too, but we're gonna save that for another video. One plugin that was actually specifically designed for parallel compression by MCDSP is the SPC-202. I'm gonna drop that down here on my master channel before the master limiter. And right here within the plugin, they give you options to change the signal flow from regular to parallel right here, serial or parallel. And for this, we're gonna be doing parallel. And they actually give you two different channels of compression. So I'm gonna take this one and have this one completely uncompressed. We'll turn the ratio down. And this one is gonna be heavily compressed. Let's turn threshold compression up. Let's turn the bite up, the release down. Let's go with and without. Without parallel compression. Back on. So all within one plugin, we have uncompressed signal getting combined with heavily compressed signal at a really low level before it goes in with our limiter. And this is a similar principle to what we're doing with our vocal, but on the master chain. Number three, this is where compression really gets taken to another level with multiband compression. Now, as the name implies, your signal is getting split up into different EQ bands, bass, mids, highs sometimes lower mids and upper mids if it's a four band multi-band EQ. Sometimes it's a three band multi-band EQ and some plugins let you create as many bands as you'd like. Another place I love to use multi-band compression is vocals. So let's drag and drop the MC404 onto our lead vocal or you could do this to the entire vocals group. Let's use this to control the mid range. Instead of using EQ to duck the mids, a great way to do it is with multi-band compression. Here we have low frequencies, lower mids, upper mids, and highs, and independent compressors for each. You can see here crossover points where the plugin has determined each band begins and ends, and you could adjust them yourself or use the default positions, which sound pretty good. Let's keep our upper mids and lower mids in check with some multi-band compression. I wake up daily on the mission. Turn up the output. Yeah, I ride or die in my position. 
Get to the point, no contradiction. Yeah, going hard is my tradition. All I do is win. And again, we have threshold, ratio, knee, attack, release, all the same controls you'd expect on a compressor, but with different controls over different bands. And you could hear there's less bid range in your face and it's only controlled what it needs to be controlled. This is such a great tone shaping tool because it's also a dynamic shaping tool at the same time. And MC404 is just the most basic and straightforward representation of that. You could see OTT is a three band multiband compressor, but we're actually gonna be getting to that just a little bit later. Now, number four is one of my personal favorite for mixing beats and that's sidechain compression. This can be a stylistic thing or a utility to help two sounds sit together, depending on how how you set it up and how aggressively you use it. As the name implies, it requires some sound source from the side to control the volume of your chain. Let's go ahead and use our snare to control the level of all of these strings during our hook. We have a synth. Let's go over here where things get really loud and we'll have the strings in. All of these things could use a slight bit of pumping to the drums to really help them drive through, at least in this style of music. I love going for the hybrid EDM and hip hop production flavor, so that's gonna be perfect for this. And for sidechain compression, I'm gonna pull up the 4030 Retro Compressor and just get the settings correct and then copy and paste it onto other channels. Ableton has a really great shortcut for sidechain compression because you could pick any sound in your project to use as a signal. Let's duck our strings to our snare. Just hit the sidechain button, pull down your threshold so that the snare triggers the reduction on the strings. Let's pull the release down. Let's solo it. You can hear those little holes being formed where the snare hits. Up. And let's copy the same plugin now onto the synth and all of these instruments that are playing the same MIDI that you hear during this hook just to help the drums bop a little bit harder over the rest of the instruments. Maybe just dial it back a little bit. And then the pumping effect goes away when the snare drum goes away. So as you can see, sidechain compression is all about reducing the volume, but using another sound source to control the reduction. It's a really quick cheat code to help sounds blend together in the mix that you want to give one priority over another. Obviously, use it sparingly, use it with caution because it can create an unwanted pumping effect in styles of music where that sound isn't really appropriate. Now finally, number five, I saved one of the best ones for last, and it's also one of the least frequently used ones in other DAWs. I think Ableton users probably use it all the time because everyone knows OTT as the famous cheat code for making things loud, making things feel extremely squeezed, but what exactly is going on in there as far as compression. OTT is a very famous example of upwards compression combined with downwards compression. If you remember from item number one, downwards compression controls the loud things by bringing them down. Upwards compression does the opposite by seeking the quiet parts of the sound and bringing it up. And what you're left with is a completely pinched and squeezed waveform that makes things feel very electronic, but it can be used anywhere between zero and 100% for you to dial it into taste. So let's take a look at what OTT is doing on these pitch down vocals here during the drop. This is a really great example. And let's turn it off. And back on. So what these blue bars represent is the upwards compression. How quiet are things allowed to be? This is a 
multiband upwards compressor. This is actually a lot in one. If you remember multiband compression, you have highs, mids, and lows separated out, and upwards compression is set by this blue line. And so if you want the quietest things to be just as loud as the absolute loudest things, you could push it all the way like this, and you're also gonna wanna pull down your output volume because things are gonna be extraordinarily loud. Rising up, I can't stop, I can't stop, rising up, I can't stop, nah, who rising up, I can't stop, I won't stop, rising up, I can't stop. So that's squeezing everything so loud that even the echoes of the room coming from the hallway outside of where we were recording are just as loud as the lyrics themselves. So that's a really extreme example of upwards compression. We're using OTT just to push the sound upwards. Now let's implement a little bit of downwards compression. Maybe we want the really loud things to not exceed where we have these orange blocks coming in. And the ratio is set by how close together these lines are. So this is an infinite ratio, and this is a very low ratio. They give you more of a visual than a number, which is kind of nice for mixing. I would rather not know a number and just look at a nice graphic representation of it. So this is downwards compression, and the teal is upwards or whatever you want to call this dark blue or brown essentially upwards compression downwards compression combine them together to completely dynamically pinch your sound for an extreme exaggerated effect i like to use it around 50 percent i can't stop now who rising up i can't stop so there you have all five different types of compression and how to use them in a mix. If you wanna check out more of the MIC DSP plugins that I used in this tutorial today, or the entire bundle, which I highly recommend, it is just chock full of some classics that I've been loving for not just years, but decades. I'll put a link in the description below and catch you guys next time in another tutorial.